Hi, in this presentation, we are going to discuss today is about hacking and cracking wireless LAN. Before I move any further with this presentation, I must have a foreword with you. This can be a kind of warning or a foreword or any suggestion. The presentation is intended to inform the audience about the methods used to hack wireless network or wireless internet connections and it is not for any malicious use but it is strictly for educational purposes only. Any use of this information is which may be lawf unlawful then you might only be responsible for the consequences arising from it. Moving on to the next slide see basically this all terms mentioned in this page that's a prerequisite for wireless LAN security just in case you don't know about any of these things I would be making a presentation wherein I will explain each of these topics separately you can access those things now moving on to the next slide we are going to discuss about the hardware requirement just assume that you have a wireless Wi-Fi network so basically if you want to hack and Wi-Fi network you must have following things you can have a wireless card which can be a USB wireless card or PCI or PCM CIA these are three types of wireless card I have recommended a PCMB CIA Prism 2 firmware or Orenco compatible USB with Prism firmware or Orenco compatible USB wireless card. You can use any of the wireless card you want, but I personally prefer the PCM CIA card. Along with this, you require a laptop or a notebook or a personal computer with Linux or BSD OS I would recommend a laptop with PCM CIA slot along with this you require a optional antenna for more gain why I recommend an optional antenna is because the Wi-Fi network needs to be strong that is you must be within the range of a Wi-Fi with the help of antenna you can boost the gain and capture that Wi-Fi antenna and you can be in the range of that Wi-Fi moving on to the next slide we can use the following tools or software here I have given the names of seven tools and software some of the tools can be used in Linux Unix or Windows based servers for additional information you can go on to google.com and research about them or you can download them and use them accordingly see a kismet is nothing but a war driving with passive mode scanning and sniffing for 802.11a b and g which are basically IEEE standards and it is also a site survey tool the air snot is nothing but a sniffing and a cracking tool for breaking down WEP encryption Etherreal is a sniffing and an analyze dump packet tool while air fart is nothing but a wireless scanning and monitoring tool the air jack is MITM attack and DOS tool and fake AP is and fake access point tool we would be discussing each of these tools in detail now WEP crack is just used for cracking 
cracking WEP encryption. Moving on to the next slide. Now let's see what exactly is Kismet. It requires a driver which is capable of reporting packets in RF, MON, like AX100, ADM Tex, Atheros, Cisco, Prism2, Orinco, WSP100, Drone, etc. It doesn't work well with Intel, Centrino, or Broadcom, or Airport Extreme, AMTEL, Realtek, or Hermes2. You can download it from the link which I have given over here or from RPF man from here or you can use the google.com to install or download Kismet there is a for there is a prerequisite about it that it requires many library and utilities to be installed for it to work the compiling and installing requires the following things to be installed that is the tar that zxvf kismet for the 2004 r1.tar.gz gz is basically nothing but the extinction over here you require a cd of kismet then you need to configure the directory then make linux or gmake BSD you can install in Linux or BSD then install this following dictionary after you're done you can install it under the directory CD space user space local set etc and this configuration setting and this is basically the configurations setting of Kismet moving on to the next slide wherein you can save the configuration setting as the following once you have done this remember you are almost done with the setup of kismet instead of the suid user josh you can type your user id or your name and make accordingly the changes over here because you can Type the name this SUID over here and this address over here this both should be same now moving on to the next slide before we move on to the next slide you must notice that the source driver in Linux is different than that in the BSG once you're done now let's see how to run a Kismet daemon once you have done you can run the Kismet as super use super user underscore root then you can run from shell terminal console and run only in suid user home directory that is the josh which we discussed you can see the Kismet dot configuration which we discussed in a slide just before or in that directory we can be written by suid user like slash tmp then after you're done you can change the directory from home to josh remember that you can type in any name like josh your name like if your name is tom you can type the name tom that's it once you have done this you can always use the kismet daemon once you're done this would be how your console would look and see this is the directory home slash Josh and this is how this root file of the shell of the Kismet would look like once it's done it can start working you can always press H for help then you will see the following list of key actions or pop-up windows now read each of the things carefully because you can use them for users which are mentioned here move on to the next slide 
Now once it's done, see basically how Kismet is working. This is a screenshot of how that Kismet is working. It will capture the packets. It can also show the IP ranges of the data network. I have purposely erased few things for security purposes of those IP addresses, but you can see what exactly it is doing. It is capturing the number of channels. It is showing the packets captured, the flags, the IP range and the size. Like I always said, you need data packets. Once you have the data packets, you need to analyze them for the authentication key to break down the encryption. Moving on to the next slide. Here you can see once it has started to work, you can see the results over here. And it can show you the SSID, the encryption, the rate, the rate of data transfer. You, you can see it has found a network name which is hidden over here. The BSSID that is the SSID of transmission. And you can see it is using a WEP encryption and the channel number is 1 and the rate of data transfer is 11 megabit per second. Using this now it will start to decrypt basically this. Once it is decrypted it will show you the following results like this. Yes it will show you results like this. You can use the following information with and then with the help of this you can easily decrypt the wireless networks. See this is the second thing which this is the second page because here the previous screenshot I couldn't show you what was happening exactly but here you can see that What's happening? It's capturing the data packets. It is keeping it alive and it is cracking it. Once it is cracked, it will show you the security key which I have erased over here. It can show you the cache files too. Now moving on to the next slide, we are going to see about S0. It works only with cards like Cisco, Prism2 and Orinco. You can download it from s0.shmoo.com or for RPM man you can download it from rpmphonebook.net or all, you can always use Google. To install s0 from source there is a readme file because it requires many library and utilities. These are the compilers used for installing the or which is basically the readme file for installing s0. This basically is one of the compiling files. The second one is C change directory to s0-0.2.5 then you need to configure it then make and make install once you are done installing you are good to go how to run a s0 s0 works in x windows mode only what you need to do is open the terminal program then shift to super user dot root only root can change wireless adapter mode Please note this, then we can type S0 and this would be the interface of the S0 and it has started to work. Once you open the S0, you can always click on the start button and it is good to move forward. Once you click the start button, it will start scanning for different SSIDs. As you can see here, it has started to scan SSIDs. It can show whether that 
SSID has VP encryption. If yes, it will show Y. If no, it will show N. And you can see those dates from which the SSID is being scanned. Like the last scene, the last IV, the name of the SSID. And this is this are nothing. The BSSID is nothing but the MAC addresses of those access points and the number of packets it has captured out of the number of packets how many are encrypted you can also see that once this is done now let's move on to the next slide where we are going to see about the ether real you can download it from http www.etherreal.com or install it from an installation CD. I use Mandrake 10.0 official and it is also easily available. You can run Etherlel on X Windows. X Windows is nothing but XP Windows Service Pack 1. Moving on to the next slide, here is how the Etherreal in action looks like. Basically, you have seen two types of softwares or tools basically the only difference between them is the interference between them here you can see the different things shown by them the protocol they are using the info or what their sources their the time etc and by using this you can find the SCR address you can find the destination address you can crack the VEP accordingly now here you can see is an aircraft which is nothing but an hacking tool used for scanning and wireless monitoring it supports only two prism cards with wireless LAN and NG driver you can download it from this website or you can direct you can download it from this website or directly go on Google for this and the interference of AirFart looks like this where it shows the Ethernet address, the SSID, the name of the manufacturer of the access point, the strength of the signal and it represents it in the form of bar and the number of packet counts it have captured and whether it is active at that point or not. 